free from physical touch? This educational video is intended to draw attention to the problem of facilitated cueing in a technique called facilitated communication. FC is known as supported typing, spelling to communicate, and rapid prompting method, among other names. Any criticisms are directed toward the proponents of FC and not the individuals being subjected to it. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment to help grow this project. The claim. In 2001, Alicia Broderick and Christy Kasha Hendrickson published an article called Say Just One Word at First, The Emergence of Reliable Speech in a Student Labeled with Autism. The article featured Jamie Burke, age 13, who they claimed was among a handful of FC users who have learned to type independently. The authors define FC as a form of augmentative and alternative communication. In addition, they claim FC supported Burke's sudden emergence of reliable spoken language when he was 13 years old. Inside the Edge As a companion piece to the article, the Facilitated Communication Institute FCI, at Syracuse University produced a documentary film starring Burke called Inside the Edge, A Journey to Using Speech Through Typing. Douglas Bicklin, founder of the Facilitated Communication Institute, is listed as executive producer. Broderick and Cassa Hendrickson are listed as co-producers. What do proponents mean by independent and free from physical touch? The authors of the study report that FC has been Burke's primary source of communication since the age of five. Sadly, they omit the fact that FC is not recognized as a legitimate form of AAC by organizations such as the American Speech Language Hearing Association because of concerns about facilitated cueing, prompt dependency, potential harms, false allegations of abuse, opportunity and financial costs, and lack of empirical evidence. However, the authors of this study want people to believe that Burke's facilitated typing, after 10 years of being subjected to FC, is independent and free from physical touch. Burke appears to have some spoken language and academic skills, and filmmakers try to support their claims of independence with FC use by having him read the following words from a script. When I first started typing, I needed a lot of support from Mom. My typing is now free from physical touch. When I first started typing, I needed a lot of support from Mom. Um, my typing is now free from physical touch. But their own film provides evidence that Burke's typing is neither independent nor free from physical touch. In fact, the facilitator touches forearms, elbows, wrist, and shoulders. At no time during the film is Burke shown typing independently by himself or without physical support. Motor Planning Inability the filmmakers appear to contradict claims of independence by asserting through Burke's scripted words that support from facilitators is necessary because of a motor planning inability. A 
Ironically, this topic arises in the film while he is opening a package of string cheese. It should be noted here that throughout the film, Burke is shown completing many fine and gross motor tasks on his own, like riding a bike, walking and carrying books, sometimes in a crowded hallway, selecting items from his locker, going through a cafeteria line and feeding himself, and selecting typed words on a list taped to the refrigerator to read aloud for the filmmakers. When I started to use speech, practice was important. I read words over and over. My brain had to be given a chance to, to learn the speech. And into is it. It's just no... Minimal physical support. Broderick and Cassa Hendrickson further confuse the matter of independence by asserting in their journal article that independence with FC can be achieved with quote unquote minimal physical support. They define this minimal support as a light touch to the shoulder or to the back of the neck. Ignoring the fact that, in the documentary, the authors claim Burke is not being physically touched, when clearly he is, perhaps Burke's facilitators are just providing him with a light touch on the shoulder or back of the neck. Nope, that was his arm, which his facilitator holds with a clasped hand. And here the facilitator holds his shirt sleeve near the wrist and then grabs his forearm. Again, not his shoulder or neck. And here the facilitator alternates support from his right arm to his left as she holds onto him just above the elbows. And finally, the facilitator in this example visibly presses Burke's shoulders as he extends pointed fingers toward the keyboard. Sometimes she uses the palm of her hands. Is this what Broderick and Casa Hendrickson mean by quote-unquote light physical touch? Recap and Conclusion Broderick, Casa Hendrickson, and Bicklin all promote the idea that FC-generated messages have produced independent communication in their client Jamie Burke. In the past, they claimed Jamie needed support from facilitators because of a motor planning inability. But now, at age 15, his typing is free from physical touch. If readers only had access to Broderick and Cassa Hendrickson's report, they might believe these claims were true. However, their own documentary, Inside the Edge, calls into question these claims, as Burke's facilitators are shown on film physically touching his wrist, forearms, elbows, and shoulders, while Burke extends pointed fingers toward the keyboard. The degree of physical cueing that facilitators provide Burke does not match the description of minimal physical support Broderick and Kaisa Hendrickson write about in their journal article. In addition, it is highly likely, better than chance, that the facilitators are influencing letter selection even if their intention is not to do so. Further, Burke appears to have some spoken language and decoding skills for reading. He can also perform many fine and gross motor tasks independently and without interference from an assistant. These inconsistencies raise the following questions. 
If he can, for example, select words on a list taped to a refrigerator by himself, then why can't he touch letters on a keyboard without facilitator interference? Is it possible that Burke has some reading comprehension and written language difficulties that prevent him from understanding how to spell and or understand the meanings of words? Given that the script was edited by Broderick and Casa Hendrickson, and the FC-generated messages were demonstrably not free from physical touch, did Burke fully understand all of the facilitated messages he was asked to read during the film? And finally, how is it that Broderick, Casa Hendrickson, and Bicklin could claim that the facilitators did not physically touch their client? Inside the Edge, the FCI's own project clearly shows that the typed facilitated messages included in the documentary were not free from physical touch and cannot therefore be considered independent. How did this erroneous claim possibly get past the film's funders? The NLM Family Foundation and Syracuse University's School of Education. Astonishing. The Science. To date, there is no scientifically rigorous evidence to prove facilitated communication, spelling to communicate, rapid prompting method, or any of their variants produce independent communication. Controlled studies show that facilitators, not their clients, are producing the typed messages. Many organizations oppose the use of facilitator-reliant techniques. These include, but are not limited to, American Speech-Language Hearing Association, American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, American Psychological Association, Association for Behavior Analysis, Association for Science and Autism Treatment. FC is not science. For a full review of Inside the Edge, or for more information about facilitated communication, please check out our website at facilitatedcommunication.org.